So one of the things that I want to do to start off, I'm going to make Mary and we're going to make her custom. And she, they allow you to do some really, really cool races, half orcs, dragonborns. I mean, these things are beautiful. They did a really good job with these, the character look and feel, and they have different body types. So you can make like a buff. If you wanted to do buff, or you can do normal. Not every class has the buff option. So this is the buff human male, and that's the normal human male. Uh, drow, you can do the same thing. So the elves, the humans, and you can see they get much more buffed up. And these the models look amazing. They did such a great job with these character models. I mean, that would be hard to believe that that's an elf because he's so buff. This is definitely more what I think of as far as an elf goes. But it's really cool that they gave you the option to make your character very distinct. Uh, they don't have the buff option for dwarves. They have it for half-elf. They don't have it for halfling. They do not have it for gnomes or Dragonborn, or Half-Orc. It looks like the Half-Orcs are just considered buff, no matter what. Uh, the Githyanki don't have it, either. It's funny, this guy, they made these, look sort of like the character from the Marvel Universe there, the servant of uh, Thanos, a little bit. Uh, so, anyway, Mary's a drow, and we are not making her buffed, we're going to keep her our normal drow. And then we get to select which we want to do, a, a loaf born or a, a seldarine drow. And they have different, you know, they're different uh, subclass, subrace. The sub race allows you to access different options and stuff. So, and this is not just for the drow. Like they have for the high elf, you can be a wood elf or a high elf. For the tiefling, you can be one of three different kinds: Zeriel, Mephistopheles, or Asmodeus. Uh, the drow we looked at. Humans have no subclass or sub race. Neither do Githyanki. The, the dwarves do, though. The dwarves have the sub... A gold dwarf, a shield dwarf, or a Durgar, which is amazing. That's great. Durgars are dwarves from the Underdark. They are like our deep gnomes, or drow. So that's really cool that they added a Durgar. The half-elf, they allow you to select what your other half is. So you can be a half drow, you can be a half wood elf, or you can be a half high elf. Uh, the halflings have subrace strong heart or light foot. And I'm assuming that's similar to what's in the player's handbook. Gnome, they did the same thing. You can do rock gnome, forest gnome, or deep gnome. Which, in DDO, Deep Gnomes are great. Dragonborn, they let you do the sub-race and pick between the different types of dragons. And the... I can't get over how beautiful their graphics are. They, they did such a great job with the artwork. That is a gorgeous gold dragon. Very, very pretty. Very pretty.
And then half orc does not have a sub race. So drought, we're gonna make Mary a Seldrine. Or do we make so the difference is that you can see they give you access to different cantrips and different proficiencies. So what we need to do first is select the class. So I'm going to do a druid. And then for my ability score, I'm going to reset everything and then we're going to start this from scratch because of what I know about the 5e rule set and advantage roles, we need to make sure that everything, it's sort of very similar to what we do in DDO, we need to make sure that everything is at least a 10 because usually when you do an advantage roll or, or disadvantage uh, the base number is 10. That's not always true, but it's a general guideline. So I want at least 10. That means that I'm not going to get a, a negative modifier when I go to roll the 20-sided die. Um, because I am a druid, I need to make sure my wisdom is the highest I can get. So it looks like the highest I can get is a 17. The next score that I will buff up is Constitution. I know from playing through the beta of this game that they do an awful lot of checks against your intelligence, so I'm going to give myself two more intelligence. And then I also know from playing the beta that Charisma affects a lot of the interactions that you have with other NPCs. And because it's a story-driven game. I want to make sure that my interactions with the other NPCs are, they, they, I have some sort of advantage in that because as a drow, I know from reading and from doing the pregame that they are discriminated against. Like people don't really understand drow. Uh, they think that they're just evil, underdark, you know, they're usually Everybody's terrified of them, or they're, you know, treated as a sub-race, so. I want a little bit more. And for combat, I think I need two into my dexterity. And then what I'm going to do, just because my one of my saving throw bonuses comes from constitution and going to give myself an extra there and that's not what they would recommend but that's what this is what I'm doing for this we get to select our background and what we are going to select for Mary's story is that in the underdark she was uh, a noble and that she fled because probably druids do not fit well into the culture of the drow, especially if they are loath drows. So that will help to sort of figure out why she's away from the Underdark. Uh, she fled. And these backgrounds give you bonuses on skill checks, so we get a history bonus and a persuasion bonus and persuasion will help us with our interactions with NPCs so that's great. There's all sorts so if you decide to play this game you can get very specific. So we have our abilities, we have our background, we need to select our cantrips so I will we get to select two. Cantrips are basically spells that you can cast that don't take up your main action. It's completely different than the way they did it in 3. So Thorn Whip is DPS. That we will do. This shillelagh allows me to turn my staff into a magical weapon. 
Resistance gives me a bonus to my saving throws. Produce flame lets me shoot fire up to 30. And it looks like it's refreshed on long rest. And that's the other thing about 5e. You can do a short rest to replenish or you can do a long rest. Poison spray is a noxious cloud and guidance gives you bonus on ability check. So I'm going to take guidance and thorn whip. Yes, that's what I'm going to take. And then the spells that I have, I will unselect them all. So I want to make sure that I can heal. So I'm going to take two, I'm going to take healing words and cure wounds. Fairy fire, I think I get later as a drow, so I'm not going to take that. Uh, oh, Goodberry is a heal. Thunderwave is DPS. I'm going to take that. An Ice Knife is also DPS. But I'm going to take Speak with Animals. Okay, so that all looks good. I'm going to slightly edit her appearance. What? Hmm. Just based on some what things was that? I know from doing the... Um, going to leave all of this stuff to fault, except I changed her voice. I want to make her skin slightly darker. Body art, that's tattooing and piercing, which I guess she could have some piercings. The eyes let you pick the iris color, and I want... So drow normally have specific eye color, but there is this elf silver. That's the one that I want. But it's cool that they let you use all the different eye colors if you would rather. Makeup doesn't really matter. That all looks fine. The hair, I want some like straight up elven hair and I want it all white. I want it very white, so that looks like it's very white. This highlight, I also am going to turn it off, but just in case it activates, we're going to make it a variant of white. Yes, but then this is also off. Yes, she's. I don't want to have any of the highlights or anything like that. I just want her to have like the straight up drow white hair, and I want traditional elven hair, which that's as that's as Tolkien as we can get right there. And then she doesn't have facial hair as a female. And they let you pick your guardian, which we are basically going to leave uh, this guardian as it is. We will assume that it's somebody that she knows from the Underdark or whatever. I'm not exactly sure how the guardian works narratively, whether it's supposed to be like a romance option or but my understanding of it is that they changed the... I think it used to originally be a romance option, but now I think they've made it... They're calling it a guardian, so I'm not exactly sure. 
we'll leave that. And so they stuck one of those little illithid babies in my brain through my eye. 